All right, and we're back. And let's see if I remember how to play. It has been, for you guys, it, it'll probably be about a, well, nothing actually, but for me, it has been a minute. Last I remember, we were getting hunted. What is this? What does this mean? I'm afraid to click it. Ah, oh, right, the, the network thing. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Okay, well, I don't have a cipher. At least I don't think so. And what is this? Oh, I can start. Oh! Okay, data actions allow you to extract data from the networks of the eye. Okay, so this is where that hacking bit comes in, I think. Uh, they work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must first match your dice to the one displayed on the right of the action. Oh, I need specifics. Okay, if you have a one or two modifier in the interface, you'll be given more possible dice to match. You can use any dice that matches the dice display. Oh, I do have it too. Hi, what's this do? Oh, so I got an encrypted key. Ah, fancy that. Okay. Oh, and I can only do like two a day. What is this? Okay, that's a wow. I, I keep hitting escape to because I I'm used to that kicking me out. But okay, let's see. Match two. Okay, so I am quickly learning the importance of the interface. All right, this gate conceals a network of systems which have been untouched since the soul of collapse. Okay. So in the last episode, it seems like whenever we dream... Oh, this is a different thing. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It seems like whenever we dream, we're starting to slowly separate from our body and start interfacing with the, uh, the ring itself. As far as my memory serves, I apologize if that's off. Okay, so this is a habit. What is this? Encrypted key. Okay, so these are these are different things. Um, dude, this is cool as fuck. <laughs> A three. Okay, let's bypass this. Okay, so we got another one. Neutral. Okay, continue. As you drift back from the node, something latches onto you. A thread, strung, st strung tight around you. It tethers you in place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. It soars somehow both distant and close behind your ear. Oh. <laughs> you see a distant glint of light shut off. And then suddenly shape. Suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown. Astringent. Astringent. Ugh. I'll have to fucking throw the Hunter. Ooh. Processing. Ah, uh, I'll be polite. The outcome is likely the same. Whoa. Whoa. Man. Dude, that's what I want to look like in 10,000 years. Let's see. Please hold. The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It's blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature, in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What are you? The shape, place, the shape paces around you on lithe legs, though there is no ground here to pace on. Entity. Identify. Origin. Serial. Cadence. The figure faces you expectantly. Ooh. See, if this was a dating sim, I'd go after Hunter. This thing's cool as fuck. Uh, Sleeper, s -Narv. Unknown. Known. The figure is strange. The figure's strange head rotates. Brackish signature. Of and not of. Attempting interface. As the figure speaks, more and more threads begin to spiral from its head. Thick, snaking vine-like ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Ah, 
please stop? The figure halts its threads, its head's twitching. Entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? Ah, <laughs> I'm technically not a person. My consciousness is a person. Um, legally, I can't. Oh, man. Okay, so yeah, legally, I... the legal system is not exactly on my side. Um, if I said I'm a person, I'll probably just disagree. No, fuck it. Incorrect. You are an entity. All at once, Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste. The one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. I will find access. I will interface. Sealed dock. An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be diverted from my task. It glows with murderous intent. Oh, fucking fight back, hell yeah. You lash out with all your force. Not a physical strike, but a focusing. A spike of interference leaping out like a, like a tip of the spear. Hunter stumbles, shifts, separates. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station light, shaking with fear. Ah, okay, so there is risk. Oh, okay. Evasion. So what do I gain from doing this all day? I'm getting keys. Okay, key node. Okay. Yeah, so I have I have these. Do these do anything? Maybe they do something in the overworld. Okay, so I <laughs> if I ever have shit rolls, I'll come I'll come fuck around here. Okay. Shipyard. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Could do this. I'll do this. Okay, yard hand plus two plus energy. That's nice. You do well, and when their shift is up, a couple of hands invite you to share a ration pack and some of their well worn advice. That's nice. Uh Okay, so what's the timer on here? Drago seems increasingly nervous about your presence in the yard. You're not sure he's going to hold his nerve much longer. Okay, so I have I have a uh, time on this. Winter light yard clearance. Okay, so I need I need to get rid of that. I uh, upon upon further consideration, I need to get rid of my uh, my negative drawback. So that might. That might, have, that might hinder what kind of chances I can make in the future. Alright, so Hunted, Sunbathe, Endure. I'm going to end Cycle, I think. I don't think there's anything I can do while I don't have any dice. I'm just going to end. Okay, so I need, I need food today. Okay. Ooh. As you close up, a voice echoes, echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wait up. I'll be nice. Oh, who the fuck is this? Yo, dog. What's up, man? Fang is coming down the corridor towards you. A wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? So you all you do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around. Just want to chat. You staying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. Can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Erlin said? The eye opens for us all? Nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. Uh, I don't care about Erlin. I don't know him yet. I'll probably be introdu introduced, so. Pass together through the main walkway. Hey. Ha <laughs> Havenage. <laughs> Havenage. We are all one dysfunctional family. Feng puts an arm around you. Uh, no touching, please. I'm not part of the security branch, though. Don't worry. I'm with systems. What the fuck is... Is this something I forgot? I don't know. Think of this as an administration, administrative association for the eye. Depending on who you talk to, we either emerge as a response to or a continuation of 
Andre Erlin's original union. He smiles. Personally, I avoid the topic. All right, cool. I don't like politics either. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I've been seeing some unusual network activity, and, well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a small proposition for you. He glances around. But, well, this is not the place for it. Do, do sleepers inherently have some sort of technical aptitude towards n- network shit? That'd be interesting. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then, when you're settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say about you sleep, if what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. Oh, okay. Pat you on the back. His voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. All right, this dude's cool. Okay, so hacking seems to be extremely importante. Okay, so the doctor thing is up and ready. I'm gonna check out Emphis real quick. I hang out with this dude. I need some chow. Give me the boost! Hey, fungus fan. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's bounce out of here. Okay, I remember this being a fine thing. Can I use anything here? No, that's scrap. Play the exchange. Okay, yeah, yeah. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshiro's implants, like a cat's eyes, in the dark of the corridor. He nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark, and you push through the sheeting into the surgery. I have it. Sabine Sabine stands with the case open in front of them. A set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it in the warm light. I have no idea how he ought to gone. They trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it really is what it appears to be. <sighs> On the test case. That seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. They gesture for you to sit on the bed. The stabilizer works under a similar principle to an immunosuppressant in a transplant operation, in that it stops your body from rejecting the unfamiliar part of itself. In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part of you is your biosynthetic organ groups. Ah, okay, that actually does make sense. Which over time are identified by your body as foreign material and therefore must be eliminated. Sabine holds up a vial of the would-be stabilizer. However, unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein change with act- which act as passcodes within your immune system. The stabilizer refreshes those passcodes, keeping your frame from rejecting all of its own organs. Okay, yeah, no, I, I actually do get that. Uh, in very basic terms, yes. <sighs> Look, what matters here is that the stabilizer should be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. They glance away, at least if this stabilizer is genuine. The only way to know for sure is to inject the vial. They begin readying the syringe. I'll start with a small dose to limit the risk. Uh, yeah, let's go. Sabine cracks the glass neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe, and you watch as if any sign might emerge from the clear liquid. You barely feel the needle. Your frame registering the initial injection, but with little response. A sensation begins to spread from the site. A fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white, and then it returns when Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light. that slowly fade into darkness as you settle back against the bed. Ah uh, yeah, that sounds okay. You swim in darkness, muffled noises, like an argument heard from underwater. Prickling waves of cold. Okay, sounds a little less alright. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting for you, s- s- uh, s- sitting in a chair, by the window, facing away from you, backlit by the glow of their slate. Awake? Yeah. Stabilizer's genuine. They sit down beside you on the bed. I don't know how Yadagon acquired a case of this stuff, but they did. 
Speeden looks troubled, distracted. You should rest some more, but you're going to have to do that somewhere else. The gesture towards the door. I have other patients. Sorry. Speeden nods towards the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You're going to need to pay for your next one. Silence fills the room as they return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow. As if things have moved or shifted. I wonder how long you've been out. Uh, Sabine? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. Oh, I know. You manage to get to your feet and wander out to the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you with a glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past. Somehow, faintly aware of the station spinning beneath you. All right. Staving off death. Let's fucking go, dude. Okay, so what is this? This is... Okay. Ah, stop. Okay. It's such a tick for me to just hit escape whenever I want to back out of something. I have to hit the, the leave thing. Okay, so... Uh, the smart money would be doing this shit right here. Uh, this is safe, so it's good to risk this shit. Cutter salvage is not safe. Okay, so these build towards these things, I think. Break it down, move it on. Okay. 50 neutral, 50 negative. I think... I think if I just... Let's see. I'm not really allowed access to much right now, so I think just fucking running it down on, on Dragos's yard is probably the play. Rotunda. Yeah, don't I have to... There's something hiding here, wasn't there? Getting another Rotunda doesn't mean... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is a positive event. This is a negative event. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. What's a five look like? Okay. <sighs> I don't remember what what neutral outcome for danger means, but let's try this. Oh, I'm on the watch list. That sucks. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. So I know the rotunda, but security knows me. I'm sure that won't come back to bite me. Yo. Oh. A mercenary? You don't say. Yo, do this guy. Oh, sorry, sorry. This, this person looks badass. Ooh. I didn't notice the ponytail at first. God damn, they stacked. Fuck. Okay. Want her in a chit? I'm assuming that's pronounced Ankita. Ankita stands stands behind a huge pile of tied together hull plates. She stretches out her back, her shoulders bulging beneath her flight seat. Bruh! Dude, kill me, man. Yes, please. Across the docking concourse as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this place, she asks, as she lashes the massive plates together. Everyone wants their cut. Yet, yeah, no shit. She straightens up an imp to an imposing height, her armor plates creaking, and looks up to you, or looks, looks you up and down. Don't try anything, all right? She taps the butt of her sidearm. I don't want to have to put anyone else down today. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Good. Look, I'm not usually, let's just say my temper's been a little short lately. Kita hoists one bundle of plating under her shoulder. Come on then. Enough chat. You got to earn that shit. You struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do eventually. Ankita gives you a look. Ships this way. And she sets off down a, a, a gantry. Gantry? Anyways, at impressive speed. I'm gonna have to fucking fill in some of these words, my god. As you catch up to her, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of... St Stevedore. Okay, uh... What's all this for? Oh, this? She nods at the plates on her back. I'm building a treehouse. She gives you another of her legs. It's for the ambergris. That cutter you might have that cutter you might have been seen sitting silent out there. Okay, I think that's one of the ships or some shit like that. I don't remember. She rapidly turns another corner. As you trail behind, 
She got cut up pretty bad in our last job, and I had to moor up here for a spell. But since it's only gotten worse, someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mine, so... Now she's gone dark. She shifts the panels on her shoulder. The upshot is that I'm short one ship mine, with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind of... I'd been stranded. So, yeah, it's been a ton. Uh, anything I can do to help? I don't know. I got a ship mine tucked away on the... <laughs> got a ship mine tucked away on that frame of yours? For a moment, you're not sure if she's serious. Ankita swings the plates from her back, almost knocking you over in the process. This is me. She hauls the second bundle off your shoulder. You're the first person I met here who might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottom lip. Look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. Bruh, I I'm love her. My fucking god. She passes the bundles of plates through the ambergrisses at her lock, and then turns back. This don't go spreading all this around. Nikita throws you a couple chits. Consider it a bonus for not trying to grift me. She gives you a parting nod and ducks through the hallway. Doorway. All right, get out of here. She calls back, and the lock slams shut. Damn. Okay, damage cutter. Okay, so that's... Okay, okay. Overlook bar. Sealed dock. Ooh. I like secrets. What is this? <gasps> Ooh. Okay, these old maglocks look like uh, they each need an encryption key to open. Why do I have a security for a decaying dock? Wait. I have one of these. I have one of these. How do I, um... How do I, how do I do the thing? Oh, data. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hey. Let's hit it a second time. I want to see what's behind here. Maglock thunks open, and you can remove it from the entryway. On to the next one. Neovend 33. Mysterious machine. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Please wait. That's so cute. Oh, it's got a little doggy. Oh my god. Decaying vending machine. As, you're, as you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discarded tubing and resting plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. Hmm. Probably best to look around first. You don't know when this place was sealed, but from the state of the outer doors high above it, it must have been decades ago. In this dark, cavernous space, debris sits in every corner, along with the traces of rough sleepers, although none of it seems recent. Looking past its layer of decay, you see the now-faded messages, symbols, and logos of the eyes original corporate owners, still glinting in the shadows. Oh, okay. Sleepers... sleepers die here? Or some shit like that? Among all this, the warm glow of the machine seems to be the only sign of life. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape, settled into an alcove in the side of the dock. A kind of upright cabinet. It's covered in faded logos and messages, from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor, intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts, necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vessels. It's a vending machine for parts, huh? It looks like they got snacks and shit in there. Uh, the manufacturer is listed as Neovend, and you remember from an advert long, long ago squeezed among the off-world recruitment drives that assaulted every planet-born citizen, which chirpily sang that name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the crack screen, thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Enter your resignation, chirps a pre-recorded message, catching you off guard. Ah, uh, guess I'll press some keys. You reach for the keypad and something begins whirring. At first, it sounds like servo motors starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, and a multi-tonal voice that emanates from Neovend. Entity, speak with me. Ah... Uh, <laughs> 
There's a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical sh swallowing or intake of breath. Before the machine speaks again, I have need of you. You have need of me. That squeal comes again, and you see that it's the uh, 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place. So that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring, whining voice. You're in danger. Danger. The machine creaks. You are marked for deletion, entity. Hunter tracks you. The screech rattles through the empty dock. You remember the strange head, the figure, the threads closing in. Hunter. The Hunter Protocol. They taste your signature. The sudden whine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. You close your eyes and the skeleton on the station, the skeleton of the station, starts to thrum. Emulated minds are adaptable, move to where neurons cannot. The machine resets, but emulation makes you target. Oh yeah? Hunter searches for illegal entities. Neo Ven screeches, you are sentient, therefore illegal. The servos judder the vending machine's casing as they reset. A hunter searches for me also. I hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine. An unusual hiding place for sure. <laughs> but they would never find you, huh? Can counter hunter, but need entity outside machine. The light flickers. Need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station. Ghostly, threaded, the cloud. Points along the rim glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build nests. Explains Neoven. Masters are gone, but continues hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nests. Hmm. Well, I'm assuming this thing has been hyper-fucking-identified, so he kind of can't. Is this a previous sleeper? No, no. They sound too rigid, I guess, masters. Station builders. Solheim. The machine rumbles impatiently. Long gone. Their protocols still haunt. Bring offerings. Safe self. The event says pointedly. Says pointedly. Mutual needs means friends. They conclude. Tired of the conversation. <laughs> The whirring amplifies, and then suddenly drops, as mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades. You are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock, that whirring voice ringing in your ears. Interesting. I got drive. Whoa! Ah, I got drive. That means upgrade, right? Right? No. Wait, no. <laughs> Shit, drive is a fucking... Objective. God damn. Okay, free Neo Vend. Survive is a pretty big one. Uh... God, I'm I'm love her. I think they're great. Okay, overlook bar. Ooh, come a regular. Hmm. That is interesting. How much do I need for food? Because I could probably do both. 15? Okay. Yeah, if it's 15, I can uh, I can go for a drink. Hey, hey! Okay. Oh, and that gives energy, too. Ah, that's probably like a short burst energy. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Um... Crossing, I don't need that. The hell is oh this one, pretty sure. And this is the empty container. Oh okay, this is like my house. And then this one, okay, this one isn't really timed. Risky danger. I can throw a six in here and then drop my safe one on the, uh... Yeah, let's try that. Alright, cool. You do well. And when their shift is up, a couple hands invite you to share a ration pack while we're advised. Nice. Nice, nice. Okay. 
Dragos, I've come to work, and I swear I'm putting in my best effort. Nah, oh. Oh, right, 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 well. <laughs> That's gonna suck. Um. Oh, I guess I'm kind of not... I guess I'm kind of not making progress if I just suck. Okay, well, that... That sucks. Hey, neutral, let's go. Okay, another day, another day, another day, another day. Um, I think I can call another one there. I'm checking my timer real quick. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, another day. All right, I'm not dead. Yo, and I got five. Okay, this is... Is a pretty is a pretty big day for me. Oh, there's Fang. Shup dog. Sleeper. Fang catches your attention as you approach the Havenage building, leaning against a bay door to the side of the entrance. Oh, this is probably about me being suspicious earlier. Okay. <laughs> Easier to come in this way. Security, all that. Gives you a look. You know. He slams a button and the bay creaks open, blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Fang inside. Truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates and things you don't recognize that glow with Bruce blue screen light. There's a chorus of hums that blend into a single wave of static, filling the dark corners of the room. Fang leans on a server stack and gestures around. You like it? Oh, it's incredible. I love tech. He smiles widely. I thought you'd say that. He taps a nearby server stack with, with bleeps in response. This is my treasure trove. All dredged up from the sea of systems we call the eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. He steps over to a towering block, speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station. Uh, one. The Solime unit. We've, uh, we've had to invent new components, repair things that we've never built, reverse engineer insider subsystems into existence. What was this station? Residents here look up at the eye and think they're seeing a constant concrete reality. But this place is a system in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. That does not sound efficient. I don't, I don't know. It sounds like they gutted some sort of fucking amalgam mess and they turned it into a place to live, I guess. It doesn't sound entirely good, but that's none of my business. I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll figure out what the fuck happens. He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. We're keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new. Dragging it away from all those corporate or origins. He stops. At least that's what I'm trying to do. Turns back to face you along the flickering machines. They hum all around you. I know you can see this too, sleeper. All these systems and sections. You can, can't you? Mmm, that's a pretty big secret, but he seems to already know, so. That makes sense, right? You are between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. That's what I need. You glance at the lights around you, and as you do, they seem to flicker, to realign. To follow your gaze. Fang notices it too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you're on the run, though. Yeah, I'm being tracked. Pat you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place. Subsystems I can't see. Access protocols lost to time and decay. Secrets. A shitload of secrets. With your help, I can unlock this place. Break off those last ghost limbs of corporate control. He lowers his voice below the hum. Even in Havenage, there is old growth. Those whose roots trace back to the bad old days. You help me dredge up the past, and I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. He winks. What do you say, sleeper? Uh, I'm in. Okay, so I'm kind of curious about decisions in this game. I don't know how... I don't know how significant that's going to be. I'm wondering if Fang and Neovend are like... Uh... Opposites? Alternates? I'm not sure. I, I wonder if they're different paths, you know? Or if they can 
just be figured out alongside each other, you know? Fang bumps his fist and claps you on the shoulder. He meets your eye. You won't regret it, sleeper. <sighs> Fang passes you a ragged-looking metal tab. A gift, he smiles. It's a Solheim cipher. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate, and you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets in the nodes inside. Ah, so that's how I get those ciphers. Okay. He walks you back to the front of the bay. Start by bringing me whatever you can... Whatever you can turn up. Use that emulated mind of yours and see what's there. Let's get a picture of how things are. Okay, so he's my inside guy. Okay. Those above, he nods at the ceiling, have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you for whatever useful data you bring in. I know you need it. He slams the door button again. Keep it quiet. And keep it clean, sleeper. I'll see you soon. You step, blinking, back out to the passage. Those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. I see. Oh. Oh, this is one of his nests. Hmm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I've got a Solheim cipher. Is this... No. This requires... I have a cipher. I have a soul. <laughs> Stop that. I have a soul. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Keynote. Soul. Okay. Throw one of these in there. Let's see what they got hiding in here. Gate S7 access. Ah... Okay, so Hunter doesn't notice that shit. Hello? Hmm. Okay, so I have... I've got a 1. I can see if anything works off a 1. Oh, that one was a 4. Ooh! Hello. That's interesting. So I have data and not a key. <laughs> I like secrets. Okay. So I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I'm going to use it. Oh! That's probably currency exchange for those other two guys. Okay, okay, okay. Yadagon. Okay, you require a one. Hello. <sighs> I wish they had, like, um... Hmm. I wish they had, like, number indicators up here. That'd be kind of nice. I don't want to, like... I don't want to waste anybody's time by, like, checking all of these. Okay, they seem to be mostly ones and twos. Let's go back to our reality. So, Fangs Bay, you should, like, data. Okay. Okay, again, there we go. Give me that good good. Hell yeah, scoping the systems and some cryo. I wonder if there's a way you can... Well, no, I'd still need to do Drago shit, but... C4... You... Like this stuff. Novan wants, wants data on the Hunter Protocol's actions and behavior, so we might counter it. Okay, okay, okay. Man, these are some pretty good connections, dude. If you ever end up on a place like this or some shit like that, and you know not only an inside guy for, like, this place, and then an inside guy for, like, security shit, which also deals with this place, that's pretty big. And also you know a buff mercenary, mercenary fucking tomboy GF? Hell yeah. Okay, what do we got here? What do we got here? 
I can buy scrap. Oh. Okay, scrap allowance. Hmm. Okay. Unload containers. Okay. Okay, okay. All right. Well, first off, I need I need chow as well. How much is it for medicinal? Oh my god. All right. Uh let's uh let's pass on that for now. Let's just uh Let's just uh drown our sorrows in food, yeah? I'm down for that. Okay. And then I should help with Dragos. Yard clearance, winter light. Hmm. Winter light is an important one. I feel like I should kind of rush this. Not sure. Damn it. <laughs> God damn it. I hate seeing negative pop up, dude. That sucks. Wait. Oh, it's the exact same. Uh, odds? Odds? A hey, neutral. We take those. We take those. So, I've got... I've got a certain period of time. Hmm. That makes me nervous, but I also... I'm also fine. I could hard prioritize that later. I kinda wanna fuck around with this. Okay. Oh, and that's not oh okay, okay. So if I do good rolls on these, they'll uh Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Not only will they pay me, but they'll give me energy. Ah oh, god, that's so efficient. That's so fucking efficient, my god. And this is me being hunted, sunbabe. Huh, okay, so there's a lot of ways to get energy. Like, if I if I roll fucking high on some of this shit, they just straight up give me food. Which, if you think about it, is hella good. Okay. If I, if I drop another six on that, I'll be considered a yard hand, which is kind of nice. That'll be another in. Um, pretty good here. Actually, hold up. Can I? Nah, nah. I was gonna, I was gonna consider dropping some cash on uh, food so I can get to know that guy, but it would probably be best to save it for when I need it. Considering I need to now save up a hundred, so. Okay. I got a two, so I can poke around in that other area now. I think these I should prioritize. Okay, so I got data there. Actually, hold up. Build a ship mine. Uh, unless I forgot... I'm wondering if these give me... Uh, points. You know what I mean? Upgrade points and shit. So those would be pretty... Hella worthwhile, actually. Let's see. This will be this will be a good test because I do want to get to know this guy. As a fellow food worker, occasionally I uh, I sympathize with this man's plight. So, <laughs> oh yeah, fungus fan. Okay. Uh, Emphis. We can chat, right? <laughs> hey, big guy. Hell yeah, sleeper. Memphis calls out to you. A booming voice that echoes through the corridor. Fuck yeah, king. Tell me a story. Throws a handful of chopped mushrooms into his block. The fire leaping up to meet the oil. I see you. Cycle in, cycle out. But we never speak. Tell me a story. Ah, uh, what kind? Any kind. Pauses to dribble some drizzle something to a plastic bottle into the walk. But, uh, what are yours? He looks up at you. Nothing's stolen. You pause. The spice is rich in your nostrils. And you think about what kind of story you'd like to tell Emphis. You look at Emphis, the listener, and imagine he's heard it all before. Perhaps he would enjoy a strange story. Something with some spice. 
Mm. Tell a ghost story. Tell them about your dreams. Mm. It's always good to talk about your dreams, man. Be passionate about stuff. Passions are super interesting to listen to. I'm not an ex- well, I don't know. I'm a fairly passionate person myself, but I always enjoy hearing other people talk about their passions, you know. Even mundane things. It's it's interesting and exciting to to hear about. All the sleepers, you tell Emphis, had dreams. Some were simple. Memories left over from the emulation process had become tangled up in their minds and would come out when they slept. It wasn't rare to hear a sleeper in the dorms scream or cry out in the night. But your dreams, those gray, skeletal after-images of systems and structures, of threads and patterns, weren't like the others. They weren't memories or nightmares. They were reflections of reality. Distorted, yes, but somehow true. You learned, back then, to keep quiet about them. To let them flow through your mind, like water. That was until now, until you arrived in this place. Ah, excuse me. (laughs) Now, your dreams colorize your waking life. They slip behind your eyelids with every blink. And now you understand they aren't dreams at all, but some process of interfacing, of speaking, of living in another world that flows through this. It flows through this one, like smoke through air. You tell them that you don't know if there's a reason for your dreams. Perhaps your reason is just some side effect, side effect, or a particular quality of the frame you inhabit. But whatever it is, it's a gift, and you hope to make use of it. Memphis finishes cooking, and squints a little at you. (laughs) Sleeper, you're quite the storyteller. He eyes you, and you realize that he's trying to gauge how honest you've been in your story. I'm honest as fuck, yo. Memphis passes you the meal he's cooked, and you take it gratefully. As you eat, he talks. A natural exchange. Thank you, Sleeper. He looks around at the emptying market. Uh, My time is done for today, and I don't want to keep you any longer, so I'll make a proposal. He gestures to the plastic boxes of ingredients stacked behind the stall. These are good enough for most, but someone told me a story that made me think a couple cycles ago. He said that across the gap, in the greenway, fresh mushrooms grow. You heard of this? Uh, no. Neither had I, but I trust the one who told me. Emphis begins packing up his things. Can you bring me some? I can't cross the gap, and I worry about leaving my things behind. <laughs> he smiles. I'm sure a storyteller like you could handle this trip. I'll prepare them for you, and if you wish to tell it, I'll be the audience for another story. Agreed. Good. Then I'll wait for you to bring them. Emphasizes his, sides his walk away and straightens up. I'll prepare a recipe then, sleeper. Good luck with your foraging. You turn and walk back to the main market, the rich taste of Emphasis' food still lingering in your mouth. Stories for food, you think. A trade that seems more than fair. Agreed. Alright. So it'll be a bit before I potentially need more shit. So he said across the gap. You talking talking the gate? Or... Hmm. Actually, let me, let me chat with this person real quick. What is this? Oh, skill upgrade required. With glitch repair drones and storage, you can rewire them. You can repair the amber wrist for it. Oh, okay, okay. Skill upgrade required. Mmm. Interface. Okay. Ah, amber hull repairs. I see. I see. Okay. Turns out years of retrofit have, been, have made Amber a fragile patient. Each repair is two steps forward and one step back. Okay, I'll do fairly safe shit here. Ship shape. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'm only allowed a few failures, which kind of bums me the hell out. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Alright, so. Leave that there. Hit up Dragos again. 
<laughs> no. Let's uh let's do this. Neutral and negative. Ah, oh, I hate that. All right. I need uh, I need an upgrade. I need an upgrade there. That's going to kill me. So, what kind of data do I got? Okay, I got the other data. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So, I just need one more for that. Man, having having like a negative perk actually sucks. Uh, what the hell am I gonna drop at three on? Is there anything I can I can throw in here? That'd be kind of cool. Hello, looking for a three. I don't want to waste it otherwise. Please. Okay, that's a two. Man, these are like all fucking twos. What was it saying that I needed? I need an interface. Okay, interface is definitely my next one. I might have to just take the hit on into it. Because interface seems way too fucking valuable, dude. And this, this is actually a really good system because it lets you burn up your shit rolls. You know, like when the hell would I want to use like a one or a two like no fucking shot so this is actually this is actually a good balancing mechanic I feel like okay shipyard I can I can make this a four I'm okay running this ah oh, god thank you all right cool 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 so I got good shit. Lem and Mina, worker and daughter. I have a feeling I'm going to like these two. We got dog tags and shit. From the walkway, the side reel horizon looks impossibly vast. Is this like a ship I'm looking at or fucking... Anyways. A landscape of, a landscape of plating and frames. All along her flanks, torches flicker. Drones maneuver. Arc lights glint. The sense of scale of industry is both stunning and strangely unsettling. Oh, oh! She's quite beautiful, I think. It's certain to see a figure a little way down the walkway, leaning at the railing. He is thin, ragged, work gear poorly fitting and loose. Oh, it's a dude. Okay, okay. This is very cute. This is very cute. Oh, Art's so fucking good in this game, dude. His work gear is uh, poorly fitting and loose. The torches of the side reel. So, the side reel? <laughs> side reel horizon. Flicker in his eyes as he turns to you. Lem. He leans back from the rail. Revealing a child standing beside him. Staring out at the ship. And this is Mina. He adds with a smile. Hi, Mina. She stares and tucks herself behind Lem. He dutifully picks her up. She's a little slow, aren't you? A little slow to trust. Excuse me, I am so sorry. A little slow to trust, aren't you, Mina? She buries her face in the folds of his overalls. Mina looks out from Lem's chest, a dark brown eye twinkling among the rough material. You're working on her, then, Lem asks eagerly, gesturing towards the vast ship. We're just admiring. He shifts Amina's weight to his other arm. I'm working. Me too, me too. He flashes a half an inch pass. I, kn I knew it just to look at you. I mean, or I knew it just to look at you. Okay. He stumbles a little over his words, not wanting to be misunderstood. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, that's a nice little quirk. I mean, you, you look like a worker. She's Mina and I's ticket out of this place. Our escape vector, so to speak. Oh, okay. The ship? You haven't heard? Anyone who takes a Havenage contract on the side reel of Horizon will be entered into a draw for the transit support crew. He smiles. We won't get to sleep to the journey, though. Uh, a couple of decades of service will be nothing for me and Mina if it means landfall on a new world. He winks. Ah. Man, hard work indeed. It's rough. Decades. It's a long trip, he straightens up, stretching his back. That's a colony ship, friend. 
The Celis Foundation is sending thousands of people to settle a system well outside the reach of the Core Worlds. It'll be a totally independent colony. No surrogacy, no corporations. Oh, sounds crazy. It could be. But you see another way out of here? This way I can build a home somewhere with real gravity. Real air. Rain. Plays with Mina's hair, absentmindedly. Rain, Mina. You'd love that, I think. Mina responds by pushing his hand away. Daddy, she whispers. Food. Pulling an exaggerated, grumpy face. She glances furtively at you. She plays with a set of dog tags and hangs from Lang's ne Lem's neck. I'm just chatting a little meanie. Give daddy a sec. It turns back to you. And you suddenly notice how tired he looks. I'm not on the Havenage crew yet, but I'll work my way in. You can do it too, friend. Let's to stick together. He smiles a little shakily, and you wonder how long he's been working to, to break into the official shipyard crew. <laughs> For sure, buddy. For sure. He looks out at the side rail horizon, as if trying to pull energy from those flickering torches in the vast hull. I've got to hold out, okay? I'm not quite sure if he's talking to you. That's how it works. While he stares out, Mina catches your eye curiously. You agree, Mina? <laughs> she straightens up and meets your eye. Daddy loves me, she says it stubbornly, daring you to question her. <laughs> Lem smiles and lifts Mina. That's it. We hold on. He smiles sheepishly at you. Now we're just a couple of softies. That right, Mina. He sets her down, standing by his side, and she clings to his leg. Gotta go feed this one. Pats her on the back. Maybe see you on a shift, huh? Turns and they walk down the walkway, away from the shipyard. You see them talking, and then a moment later, Mina turns around and stops. See you, robot! Her shout echoes down the hallway, and she flashes you a parting smile before running to catch up with Lem. You watch them a little before you turn back to the impossible scale of the side rail horizon. A ticket out. Interesting, interesting. But at what cost? All right. Hmm. Oh, I gotta, I gotta keep it tight. Okay, shit. That sucks. Ah, so I can, I can go tech route, or I can go engineer route. Fuck, dude. Quality control? That's intimidating. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, what's the yellow bit here? Tracking on a gun. Fragment supply. What is this? Okay. Sling the officers. Oh, can I take down Yadagon? I'll probably be able to side with him, right? I don't know. That... That's partially conflicting interests, you know what I mean? Because, like, I kind of need that shit to live. Okay, so I need I need cash. That's a big one. More importantly, I need it to rest. Okay, I'll probably run, like, one more cycle. And then I'll call that, like, an episode for today. Yo, bunch of twos! Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Okay. Can't wait to hack shit. Alright, so. I still don't have any points. I wonder what. I wonder what causes points. Okay, so I. Okay, wait, do I have. Why is. Why are these lit up? Do I have interface? I thought I had interface. Into it. Oh, okay. I don't know why this triangle's all <laughs> lit up, but... Oh, actually, wait. I think I got the perk. Okay, yeah, yeah, And doing this is a plus one. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Agent notes give double data rewards. Scrap components at home to repair condition. Oh! That's really good. That's a good way to buffer between shots. These are all so good. Holy shit. Chance to gain energy after any engage reaction. Engage action. 
it's pretty good. Cryo actions are discounted. Ugh. <laughs> Dice actions display potential positive and negative outcomes. That's also solid. Fuck. T oh my god. Fucking choice paralysis, dude. That kills me in real life. This is gonna be this is gonna be such a stressful play playthrough for me. <laughs> okay. Scrap freighters. So I can. Actually, one sec. I can throw this in here, right? Positive. Okay. Actually, hold up. Endure plus one. I could throw this in there, right? Positive neutral. Let's try that. So give me energy if it's positive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's super dope. Okay. So now that now that I'm good on food, I can focus on working. And if I work really dopely, they'll give me energy. And that's super pog. I fucking love that. Okay. Um. That hunting bit's making me nervous. Let's jump into this world and get some fucking shit. Okay. Have an edge data. Okay. Okay. So. I need a key for this. Interesting. Okay, I don't have access to the the Havenage bit. So this is Keynote. Solheim, Solheim. Havenage, Keynote. <laughs> Let's get this going, yeah? Interesting. That'll get me... Oh man, <laughs> he does not like that. Okay. Hey, homie, got you something. Me and my pal vending machine over here, we're gonna bust out. Okay. As you upload the data to the vending machine, NeoVend whirs in either pain or delight. That's hard to tell. <laughs> uh, let's get dialogue. Neovend is thrumming with excitement. The movement of the servo motors rock the vending machine back and forth at unsettling angles. You wonder if it fell over. Or, you wonder if it fell over, would Neovend be able to get back up? Probably not. Sleeper, Entity. Comes the hiss. Your data is good. Across the face of the vending machine, raw code scrolls at an incredible speed. Hunter is isolated. Disconnected. Unstable. The event flashes a sequence of mangled data, compressed into a sludge of artifacts. A hunter gathers without thinking, outlived its own operational limits. Its nests are evidence of this. I see. Hunter activated during collapse. Emergency protocol to isolate intelligences. Solheim needed to protect property. The last word is said with as much sarcasm as a vending machine could reasonably produce. I see, I see. Station was run by administrator intelligences, huge data banks of corporate material, but limited cognition, restricted by programming, cannot reach sentience. The machine dims a little. Sentience, illegal, hunter, and killer enforce law. Killer, okay. The machine resets with a screech, which deepens the silence that follows. Fear, killer part of Solheim protocol team, hunter and killer, hunter to find, killer to erase, killer cleared almost all, after, after collapse there was a community, unshackled intelligences among the cloud, then hunter, then killer, then we hid, oh there's others, okay, were, no longer, oh that sucks, okay, a flicker across the machine's monitors. It a flicker across the machine's monitors. It suddenly occurs to you that speaking like this through this machine 
Must be exhausting for Neo then. Found this vessel. Could server, sever, hardline, airwalled, basic, limited. Had to reduce memory to fit, amputate self, but survived. That sucks, okay. Memory, understanding, knowledge, many things. You look around the bay at the scrap and decay. What is the collapse like? You try to map the fear and freedom into this space, but it seems impossible. Man, I fucking... It has been too long since I played the first episode. I don't entirely remember that collapse bit. I might rewatch the first episode. <laughs> Fuck. The event interrupts your thoughts. Do not worry. Data is good. We have insight. The machine glows warmly. Hunter is obsessive. Hunter is beyond operational limits. Hunter is confused, unstable, self-modifying. Therefore, believe Hunter is sentient. Hunter is programmed to find sentience, to hold it in place, to invoke killer, to erase. If we can show Hunter to itself, it will invoke killer on self. Problem it will solve self. Um, will that work? The machine dims and fades. Unsure. Theory, not practice. The machine brightens again. Either way, cannot remain here any longer. Too long in machine. Cannot move self, but sleeper entity can help. Ring ship mind. Designed to house intelligence. Can imprint self into ship mind, and you can carry with. The machine rocks. We'll be safe in this isolation. Then we find main nest of hunter and link to cloud. Ooh, okay. Oh, would this decision draw away from the hot mercenary? That would be kind of a bummer. Maybe I could make it so that he's a cool thing in her cool ship. Can, can everybody be happy? That'd be kind of that'd be kind of dope, right? Build from fragments by salvage. We cannot leave, so do not know. Try to think of places you could acquire the hardware. This isn't going to be easy. In Shipmind, I can help us both. And Hunter, make Rim safe. We will both be free. Machine dims. Find soon. Neovend Neo adds hopefully. Before shutting off. As you leave, you think about all the intelligences unshackled by the collapse. Then hunted down afterwards. The feeling is all too familiar. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Through context, I'm beginning to remember. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That really sucks. That really sucks. That's like... In order to escape that fucking program, the hunter, he had to essentially, in an act of desperation and survival, he had to strip parts of himself, most of himself, um, to fucking hide away in a vending machine. That, that's rough, man. Okay. Um. <sighs> let's see. So I need, I need scrap. And I can buy scrap. Hmm. Is there other ways of getting that shit? Oh yeah, I can buy scrap here. Okay, okay, okay. So I can... I see, I see, I see. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, I'll do this. So I can get more energy, get some more cash, get a bit more scrap. Oh. Oh! Okay. 
Oh, so this is like ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so that is a luck-based thing. Useful salvage to the right person, and then here. Oh. Okay. So, how many components do I need? Insert ship my oh. How do I build a core? <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 what's happening? <laughs> oh no, oh no. Okay, um. So I have, I have components, I have a shipmine fragment. Would doing shit here? Oh, fuck. The fuck do I construct a core? Dragons, help me! This sucks. It's gonna add to, uh... What? Oh. Okay. Oh, this this is stress. Yo, this is stress. What the hell? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Well, I think I think that's a decent place to end it for now. I have to um, I have to go pick up my brother here pretty soon. So I suppose I will end it for now. We'll see if anything we'll see if anything pops up. If nothing pops up, I'll probably just end the episode there. We'll see if anything cool story wise happens. And we'll leave it at that. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye now.